sometimes people have the idea that water baptism is required for salvation. And um, let me just show you that if I could. We're going to come to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, but get Mark 16 with me if you would. One of the reasons it's necessary to rightly divide the word of truth is that the Bible says different things in different places. So to take an obvious example, Genesis 1, God gave Adam a vegan diet. Genesis 9, God gave Noah a diet where he could eat every moving thing that liveth. In Leviticus 11, God said there are some animals that are clean, some animals that are unclean. In other words, there's three different dietary programs just in the first three books of the Bible. Well, what do you do with that? How do you know which one's right? Well, the answer is the Bible doesn't contain any errors. All of them are correct at the time for which they are given, but they don't apply outside of that time. So we are no longer under the instructions of Genesis 1 or Genesis 9 or Leviticus 11, not because they're false, but because Paul gave new information in 1 Timothy 4.4. 4, he says, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. Well, that means what Leviticus 11 said about clean and unclean animals was true back then. But it is not the case today during the dispensation of grace. There is a different program that is in effect. So Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Is water baptism required under the kingdom program in time past? Yes, it is. Get Luke 7, Luke chapter 7, Luke 7, verse 29. And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God. Notice how they did that. Being baptized with the baptism of John. So when people during the Lord's earthly ministry believed the gospel that was preached, what did they do? They got water baptized with John's baptism. Verse 30. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. You know what happened when someone before the cross, when they heard the gospel of the kingdom and they didn't believe it? You know what they did? They said, no, nah, no thanks. I'm not getting water baptized. They rejected it. Under the gospel of the kingdom, the heart attitude of faith was to get water baptized. The heart attitude of unbelief was to reject water baptism, to refuse to be baptized. Now, let me show you why that matters. Get 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We live during the dispensation of grace, and things operate differently during the dispensation of grace than they did in time past. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Now, ponder that just for a minute. Could John the Baptist say, well, I wasn't sent to baptize, I'm preaching the gospel. He couldn't say that because what was his name? John the Baptist. John's gospel, his very message was to be baptized for the remission of sins. Paul says... Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, which means Paul's gospel doesn't include water baptism. I'll say it again. If Paul says Christ didn't send me to baptize, but he sent me to preach the gospel, then his gospel is not water baptism. It cannot be. Look with me at Ephesians 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4, verse 5. Ephesians 4, verse 5. Start in verse 4, there is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, uno baptism. Yes, I am very knowledgeable in Spanish. Uno baptism, only one. Now, get with me 1 Corinthians 12. What Paul just said in Ephesians 4 is there's one baptism for today, just one. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. 
The baptism of today is not a water baptism. It is a spiritual baptism. When you believe the gospel today, you are spiritually baptized. You are spiritually placed into Jesus Christ. That is the one baptism that you need today. Get with me Galatians 2. So what I'm, I'm telling you is this, and, and some folks will have trouble with what I'm about to say, but I'm just going to tell you what the Word of God says, and you can search it out for yourself. There are different Gospels in the Bible. There is more than one Gospel in the Bible. So when I tell you that Paul had a Gospel that was different than John the Baptist, when Paul had a Gospel that was different from Peter and the Twelve, he had different Gospels because they had different content. So let me see if I can show you that. Galatians chapter 2, verse 7. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. You know what the prefix un means. Un means not. So something that is unusual is not usual. Something that is unnatural is not natural. Something that is unexpected is not expected. You get that. Now, notice carefully what Galatians 2, 7 says. When they saw the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, Paul, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. Now, just ponder this. Uncircumcision and circumcision are opposites. They're not the same. Can you be circumcised and uncircumcised at the exact same time? And the answer is you can't. You're one or the other. That's, that's just how it works. So if Galatians 2, 7 is true, which of course it is, then Peter and Paul had different gospels. Peter had the gospel of the circumcision. Paul had the gospel of the uncircumcision. So you can see what's going on there is that there are different Gospels in the Scripture. Peter and Paul had different Gospels. That's why Paul said, for Christ sent me not to baptize. That's why he didn't say there are two baptisms or three baptisms or four baptisms. There is one baptism according to Ephesians 4 verse 5, and 1 Corinthians 12 tells you it is a spiritual baptism. Let me give you one other thought on that. If you think that water baptism is required for salvation, you need to keep in mind Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. This is my personal experience. You can decide for yourself. When I have witnessed to people and I've asked them, if you were to die today and God were to say, why should I let you into my heaven? What would you say? If you ask people that question and you do that for a while, here's one of the things you're going to learn. You're going to learn that a lot of people will say to you, I've been water baptized. And that's a little scary because lots of people are water baptized, but they don't have faith. It's only faith that saves you. I was water baptized when I was an infant. I didn't have any sort of faith. I didn't know any better. I didn't. I wasn't making a choice. The reason why I was water baptized as an infant is my parents wanting to do good as they understood it. They had me water baptized because that was what the church that we attended believed at that time. And so they were doing what they thought was right. But when I was water baptized as an infant, was I in my heart making a declaration of faith? No, I didn't have faith in that water baptism. To be perfectly honest with you, didn't do me any good. What did me a lot of good is when years later, Someone told me the gospel that, that Christ died for my sins, was buried, and rose again the third day. When they told me that, and I believed it, I trusted what the Lord Jesus Christ did when he shed his blood for my sins. He saved me in an instant. 
He didn't wait. He wasn't waiting for me to see how my life turned out. He saved me the very moment I had faith. See, he counted my faith for righteousness, is what Romans 4 says. Get with me Ephesians chapter 1. I want to show you something here. Ephesians 1 verse 13. In whom ye also trusted. They trusted in a whom. That whom was Jesus Christ. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So what happened is someone heard the gospel and they trusted it. They believed it. In whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. See, here's what happens. When you hear the gospel and you believe it, what God does is he seals you. His spirit seals you. And how long does he seal you for? Get with me Ephesians 4, verse 30. Ephesians 4, verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. So you believe the gospel at some point in the dispensation of grace. How long are you sealed for? Well, some people were sealed for a couple thousand years because they're sealed all the way up to what? The day of redemption. What is the day of redemption? Well, according to Romans 8.23, Paul talks about the adoption to wit the redemption of the body. The redemption of the body occurs at the catching up of, of the body of Christ. So when you believe the gospel, Ephesians 1, what happens is you're sealed by the Holy Spirit unto the day of redemption. And what I like about that, frankly, is I can't mess it up. My salvation is not maintained because I always do the right thing, because just honestly, I don't. And of course, you already knew that. My salvation is not maintained by my goodness or my faithfulness or my consistency or my endurance. It's maintained because the Holy Spirit sealed me from the moment I believed all the way to the day of redemption. Go back to Ephesians 1. I want to show you something in verse 14. Ephesians 1 verse 14. The end of verse 13 says, You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. I love verse 14 for this reason. What an earnest is, an earnest is a down payment. In, in olden times, they would call it earnest money. So you're making a large purchase. You want the seller to hold the item for you. So what you do is you put down a down payment. You put down earnest money as a guarantee of your sincerity. It's, it's a promise. I'm going to come back with the rest of the money. That's what it is. Well, according to Ephesians 1.14, the Holy Spirit is given to us as an earnest, as a down payment, as a deposit on what God is ultimately going to accomplish with us. Now, what happens in, in human life when you put down a down payment and then you back out of the deal? You change your mind. You say, I don't want to go through with this, or maybe I can't go through with this because I just don't have the funds to finish this transaction. And that, that happens in life, doesn't it? Well, when that happens, one of the dangers is you could lose the, the down payment. You could lose the deposit because the, the seller might keep it. Well, ponder that with me. Is God going to back out of the believer's redemption? Say, no, I changed my mind. Unforeseen circumstances, something came up, going to go in a different direction. He doesn't do that. And there is zero chance that God the Father is going to forfeit the Holy Spirit, because he changed direction. That is lunacy, that is madness, that is crazy talk. What that means is this, you can have the assurance, you can have the certainty that when you believe the gospel, you're sealed under the day of redemption, you have a salvation that cannot be lost. It is impossible for it to be lost because the Holy Spirit never fails in what the Holy Spirit sets out to do. And the Holy Spirit set out to seal you from the moment you believed until the day of redemption.